Grumble and Growl on Oria TV. So, what would you tell someone coming from Iraq and maybe similar circumstances? What would you tell them about the United States? The, the United States is a country, country of opportunity, and you you need to be smart and you need to know what is you gonna do. And the first thing that I encourage every refugee come here first is to improve his English, to improve his English first if he doesn't speak English, and the second thing is start to look for a job. Because when you have a job, you feel you are a normal person, you depend on yourself, and you, you, you try to reach self-sufficiency in your, in your life in the United States. And I just want to like to, 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 to say something is clearly that refugees, they don't steal job as some people think about right. that. Honestly, they accept any job mm -hmm. and they doing the job that like most people, they don't, they don't like to do. It's it. true. And he's in the position to know yes. because he gets the jobs for refugees. Yes. And uh, from my perspective and from my experience in my job, I saw many employers, they are pleased to hire a refugee for two reasons. They are a hard worker, they are uh, honest in their work, and they respect their time. Mm -hmm. So that just makes them, they spend a long time in, in, in the position. Yeah. And uh, why? Because they wanted to afford and help their family and to not stay in public assisting and uh, as some people think that it's we true. just uh, wanted to stay in the public system because if you stay in the public system, nothing changes in your life. Mm -hmm. You are probably going to go from the first month at the beginning of the month to until the end of the month, but you're never going to see the change. One thing about refugees that maybe a lot of Americans don't understand is that they were someone where they were. They had a life and a job and a mm. career mm. and then to come here mm. and not have the language and, and not have maybe yes. the same credentials mm. that are required here is very difficult. Mm. I, and and I, I don't see any any of the refugees that I've come in contact mm. with, none of them have been just waiting for that check. Mm. All of them are waiting for how do I get to work, like what kind of jobs yes. can I do. So uh, I agree with what you're saying mm. about refugees. And. Uh... I wanted to add something that, you know, as a refugee from my experience, we never planned about this trip. And before, like, the things change in my country, I was living my normal life. I have my own house, my own car, and have my, my own career. And uh, I love my neighborhood, my, my, my city, my friend, my culture, my... And I never expected one day I'm gonna leave my country. Yeah. But as I said, is in one day everything is changed, change, and you have to choose between death or life. So mm -hmm. that's the reason we left our country. But at, at the same time, we appreciated the country that welcome us, give us the opportunity to start our life in your life and as you as you see most of the refugee they are love this country mm -hmm. and they appreciate it for any yeah. uh the assisting, my experience too yeah assisting that they got from uh, this country to start their new life mm -hmm. and thanks god we 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 start uh, from zero and now we have like my kids i have four kids they already two of them they graduated from college and the other two are uh, in the college now. Uh -huh. And my my older daughter, she is uh, uh, working at full time at Upstate as a, a respiratory therapist. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's very good. And <laughs> right now, she is planning to complete her study to get master degree and to to be a PA. That's so, amazing. Yes. And I think I am example of a refugee family, and according to my knowledge, there are many families like like us. Oh yeah, we are like to be uh, successful in our in your life yeah. here. Yeah. Why? Because we are persecuted and we have a hard time to start a new life. So when we come here, we 
respect this country, we love this country, we try to be, to add something, to add something to this country. Your story, some of the things that you're saying have been said by the other refugees that we've had on the show. Mm. So it's amazing that you're coming from different parts of the world yeah. Yeah. at different times and mm. you're saying basically mm. some of the same things about America and about how to get along here in America. So, mm. Mohammed, <laughs> you came here when you were five years old and you didn't speak a speck of English, I'm betting. Yeah, what was the mm -hmm. first thing you remember coming to America? I remember the apartment that we got in. Yeah. The first day. Uh, I remember that my mom said, are you hungry? I was like, yes. And then she bought a banana over. And that's the most vivid memory I have when I first got to America. I don't remember the trip here. I don't remember any of that. I just remember when I got to the apartment and after that, I was asleep and I was extremely tired. How did you, how did you assimilate into life here? Because it had to be much different. Yeah, uh, I was- Did you go to school right away? Yeah, I, I went to school, I think a year after, a couple months. Uh, when it started in the fall and then uh, I went to a nearby school. It was called Frazier uh, I started there and then I just got along with the kids and then after a while It took me a while to learn English uh -huh. and then after that it just started going forward and uh, I joined the soccer team I kept on playing and he calls it soccer <laughs> and, Yeah, I joined the soccer team after that I met new people I have new friends and now I have many contacts of different people and uh, Different cultures as well. Great. What was the hardest thing? Honestly, it was learning the language. Yeah. Like, you have to learn it properly. Like, reading, yeah. writing, the grammar. You can't just speak. It's really hard, yeah. I'd say, the language. Learning a language is hard. I yeah. spent six months studying Russian, and I can barely say anything in that language. So, how can we help you or people in your situation, like, who, who are coming here in your situation? Like, what would you say for us to do to help people? I say patience. You know, because uh, it can take us a while, you know, to get used to the culture. We're going to probably have our own uh, mentality from coming from a different country. So I'd say patience is the best advice. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And uh, I think if you welcome the refugee and uh, try to assist them, that will help them to start their new life here. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, Harth and Mohammed, what do you want these people out here to do after they've heard this story? Do you, like, what would you want them to do with this information? I, I'd say uh, try to like, help as many people as you can who are in, in the same situation as us. I'd say that's uh, one of the best starts to have. Yeah, okay. And I think you hear it like me as an example of, of my story and the other refugee. We come here to to build this country and to uh, to be something like to help the others and uh, so the only one thing that if like they can welcome and help the new refugee that would be awesome and we appreciate any kind of the help even like by uh, uh, a good word welcome yeah. that is that's enough for us it's true it's true yes. Well, Harith and Mohammed, thank you so much for coming on the show You're today. Welcome. This is a great story, and I really appreciate you sharing it with everybody. All right, thank you so much. Bye for thank now. You. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.